welcome to practice. Um, we're going to begin laying down and I've got a blanket folded on the long edge or you could roll up the towel and that's to go underneath the shoulder blade. And you know you've got your shoulder blade supported. You put your arms straight out from your shoulders and you can feel that support on that soft skin of your upper arm in the right spot. As long as that feels okay. Good. And then we're going to take the, the legs are bent, feet parallel, and take your arms overhead. Now, sometimes it takes a bit of adjusting to make sure you've got your shoulder blade sitting flat against your back ribs. You might need to roll a little bit to one side and get that organized. And then checking in that your neck feels relaxed enough here. So the front and back of the neck sort of even in length. You don't want to feel like you're squashed in your throat or squashed in the back of the neck. You could always put another little pillow under your head. If the support feels too strong under your back or the shape just feels too much in your body, then take the blanket out and just lay, use the flat of the floor instead. And we're going to let the arms, the shoulders relax, the face, the throat relax. Noticing that this position might not be comfortable exactly. Uh, is there some tension that you could let go of? Good. And then we're going to take the arms out to straight, palms facing, and bring the soles of your feet together and the knees out wide into Baddha Konasana. And really lengthen the sides of the rib, the belly, the chest, reaching the fingertips from the toe tip. Neck relaxed, throat relaxed. Feeling the rise and fall of the belly. The flow of the breath. And even though there is some awkwardness to this position, well, there is for me. Noticing the flow and the calm connection. Looking at the breath. Feeling the breath. Mm. Beautiful. And then releasing, bending in your arms and your legs and rolling to your right side. So take it easy as you do that. It can be quite a strong uh, adjustment to the shoulder blades and the shoulders, the upper back. No, no, we don't need the blanket, but, um, oh, actually, yes, we do. <laughs> we'll take a seat for a moment and make your legs comfortable. Hmm. Let's test out that 
few adjustment in the upper body by just taking the arms up by the ears. Mm, drawing the shoulder blades down. Good. And turn the palms forward. Imagine you had a wall behind you, right? You were sitting right up against a wall. And we're going to try and keep the elbows and the backs of the hands against that imaginary wall. So as you bring your elbows down, what's probably happening is the hands are coming forward. You keep reaching the back of the hands back. And we'll come down just below shoulders and then back up again, but really try to keep moving the elbows back, <clears throat> excuse me, the back of the hands back. And lifting up to straight arms again. And another couple of those, nice and slow, with the focus into reaching back with the elbows and the backs of the hands. Mm, 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 mm. Beautiful. And then releasing. And we'll turn around to the left side. Little Sukhasana twist. And find your breath. Feel the breath in the lift of the spine, the turning of the wrist. Feel the space between the shoulder blades. Feel the breath filling that space, moving that space. Beautiful. And then come back to centre and swap the cross of your leg and second side. Mm. And again, feeling the breath lengthening the spine, in the movement of the ribs, in the space between the shoulder blades. Ah, back to center and swapping the cross of your legs again. And we'll go over to the right side and reach the left arm and lift the rib cage. Connecting to the flow of the breath. Easy feeling here for the back of the neck. Keep the shoulder blades back. Good. And then inhale. And coming up. And let's swap the legs again. Last side. Rolling back the right rib, heart towards the ceiling. Breathing deeply. Mm, good, and then coming up. Now we're going to come up to standing. And you don't need your blanket. We are going to use a chair today. Um, you don't have to, of course. I'm going to use it so that I can really pay attention to the form of some kind of salutes to the sun. So chair facing Hadasana, Urdhva Hastasana. Feel the breath, feel the body. Uttanasana. Mm. Let's take a few breaths here and get in touch with the hamstring. Have your knees as bent as you need to, to not overstretch. I'm resting my forehead at the seat of the chair, but you might have your arms up straight and be reaching the top of the head forward if you feel that that's too strong in your lower back to reach further. So we want to keep that feeling of ease in the lower back. Starting to pay attention to that feeling of stretch in the back of the legs. Breathing deeply. Mm. As that initial resistance starts to abate, feel that your feet are hip width and parallel, your legs are parallel. Mm. Good. We're going to put the hands up on the chair 
and step your left foot back. So we're in a short lunge position, in even the right foot forward a little bit more. Back heel on the floor, straight leg. Lift your breast spine, look forward. Hmm. Good. And then we're going to start to lean the top of the, up, oh, sorry, reach the top of the head further forward. Lift the belly, reach it further forward. And just noticing the resistance in the leg. Definitely not overdoing it in your lower back. You're keeping a sense of ease there. You can stay up on straight arms if that feels better. Good. Now from here, we're going to just put the right arm or right hand down in a line with your front foot and then take your left hand onto your hip and we're going to turn the ribs to the left side. Feet are facing forward. Good. If it feels all right with your shoulder, take your uh, left arm by your left ear. Good. And then we'll release. Right. Reaching the top of the head up and forward again. And we're going to do the other side. So put the left hand onto the seat or the left elbow, right hand onto the sacrum. And we'll turn the hip. So lifting the right hip, keep the left heel pressing down, turning the rib cage so the right ribs are lifting up. Good. And if it feels all right, take your right arm, you can take it straight up to the ceiling or by your right ear. Mm. Finding the flow of the breath. Beautiful. Bring both hands to the seat of the chair or the floor and step the feet back, downward facing dog pose. Feel the breath in the length of the body, the space of the body, the resistance in the body. Good. And then we're going to step the left foot forward. Keep the back heel pressing down. Noticing the stretch now on this side. Good. Keep lifting the top of the head and reaching further forward. Checking in with how your lower back feels. Relax a little bit there. Even if you have to wiggle your ribs a little bit to relax there. Try that. Mm. Good. Now we're going to bring the left hand sort of in line with the front foot. The right hand onto the right hip and turn the hips to the right side. So we're rolling the right hip back. Good. Rolling the right rib back of a hybrid posture. Mm. We'll take the right arm up and then by the right ear. Mm. Feel the breath in the length of the body and the space of the body. Beautiful. Releasing that side. And then we'll go to the second side. Bring the right hand kind of in line with the front foot. Good. And then we're going to turn the ribs this time to face the left side. Your left hand can be on your hip. Really turn the left ribs back. We're pressing down through the back heel. Feel the breath in your strong legs, your agile feet, the length of the spine. Good. Lifting the ribs, the left ribs, rolling back, the front ribs shining upward. <sighs> The heart shining upward. You can take your arms straight up here or even by your ear. Oh, just make sure it feels okay in your neck. Draw your shoulder blades to your back way. Beautiful. Release and back to the front. Good. And we're going to step the right foot forward and be in Uttanasana again, standing forward bend. Mm. Feeling the capacity of the breath. Mm. Good. And then bend your knees and inhale. And rolling all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. 
and Tadasana. Mm. Inhale, arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. Mm. We're going to take uh, Uttan, from Uttanasana, sorry, lift up onto the straight arms, look forward, left leg reaches back, right leg reaches back. We're in a downward facing dog pose. Mm. And come into a plank position. So bring the shoulders forward over the top of the wrists. Press the back heels back. Lift the... Oh, not quite right. Uh, lengthen the front of the thigh. So you can feel your tailbone lengthening down towards the heels. Feel the front core of the body supporting. Check that your elbows aren't overextending. They're a little bit bent and pressing out just above your elbow. Breathing deeply. Good, pressing back into modified or chair downward facing dog pose. Good, and we'll step forward with the left foot. Mm, step forward with the right foot, Uttanasana. Bend the knees, inhale and roll up, arm side. Excuse me, sorry, Tadasana. <laughs> Second side, inhale, arms up. Uttanasana. How does your back feel? Can you feel that expression of the breath in the lengthening of your the back of the leg? Strong in the quadriceps. Beautiful. We'll take the right leg back. Left leg back, downward facing dog pose. Can you feel the breath in the space between your shoulder blades, your neck long and relaxed? Lifting kneecap, lifting the back of the leg, the uh, sit bones. Mm. Good. Plank position. Bring the shoulders forward. Good, but lengthen the front of the thighs. So we want the tailbone to feel like it's reaching towards the back heels. You can feel the front core of the body lifting. Check with your elbows, a little bit bent. Good. Feel the breath and the strength of your arms, the ease of your neck. Press back to downward facing dog pose. Good, and step forward with your right foot. And your left foot down, Uttanasana. Standing forward bend. And just relax for a moment. <laughs> I'm going to drop my arm. Mm. Lifting kneecaps. Good, bend your knees. Inhale. And come up. Looking up. And as you... Inhale, arms in Tadasana. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Uttanasana. Mm, this time let's jump back. So little light jumps, feet to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog pose. <laughs> nice. All right, more traditional stance. We're going to turn the left heel into the center and step the right foot forward. So this is for Trikonasana. So we're lining up the right heel with the center of the left foot arch. Put your right hand just onto the chair there or onto your leg if you're not using the chair. We'll roll the left hip back and find your Trikonasana. Good. Now we're going to activate that upper part of the spine. Take your left arm back. Keep moving the rib cage, the left rib back with you as you go. So the heart starts to really shine upward. Ah, oh, hello up there. <laughs> ah. mm. 
Beautiful. And then we'll release that side. Step your right foot back and your left foot forward into Trikonasana. So line up your left heel with the centre of the right foot in the arch. Place your hands on your leg or on the chair. We'll roll the right hip back. Take the right arm up. Good, but then we're going to use the right arm as a lever. And we're really going to roll the rib cage. So the right ribs are rolling back with the right arm reaching back. And the heart is looking up. And feel the breath in the lengthening of your leg. Ah, oh, the opening of the heart center. Ease of your neck. Flow of breath. Mm. Beautiful. And then release that side. Take the foot back, left foot back. And then little tiny jumps <laughs> towards the front of the mat. Uttanasana. Ooh, and then Urdhva Hastasana and Tadasana. Mm. Good. A little bit of balancing now. Now you can either do this with or without your chair. I'm going to go with. So I'm standing on the right foot. I'm going to put my left foot up on the seat of the chair. Hands. It's really hot here this morning. Hands in front of the heart. We'll take the right elbow towards the left knee. Now, maybe it doesn't quite reach. Try to keep your thumbs in front of your breastbone because you, you're going to move your rib cage more if you do that. You might be able to anchor your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. And if you do that, then keep trying to open the ribs so you line up your breastbone with your thumb. And look back over your left shoulder. Mm. Good. And then releasing this work. Swapping side. Okay. So we're heading the left elbow towards the right knee. So if you were doing this Freestanding, same thing. Heading the left elbow to the right knee. If you can get your elbow to anchor to the outside of your left, sorry, the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, then see if you can press your palms and rotate the ribs so your breastbone lines up with your thumbs again. So you're really turning your rib cage and looking back over your right shoulder. Feeling the flow of breath in that strong standing leg, the lengthening of the spine, the turn of the rib. Good, and then releasing that side. A nice work. Now, either repeat that one using your chair, or we're going to try it in a squat position. I'm going to put a little bit of blanket under my heels because they don't quite reach the floor. So exactly what we did before, you'll be standing on your right leg with your left leg on the chair or you're trying that in a squat. I've got my heels a little bit wider than the hips and toes turned out. That's going to make my squatting a bit simpler. Good. And then we're going to turn as far as we can around to the left side. So you won't be able to reach your elbow to your knee from here, but turning the rib cage. Notice how the right heel comes up. See if you can press it down. Mm, good. And come back to center. And then we'll swap sides. So if you're standing, you can swap sides. We're going to do it one more time. Turn as far as you can. Try to get the left heel to come down. Good. and then come back to centre and come up from your squat. Now, we're going to make it stronger in the knees. So either go back to using the chair or you can repeat with the knees out wide. This time we're going to have feet together, knees together and come into a squat. Six, 
I haven't got quite enough blanket under my heels. Oh. You want to have enough so you don't fall backwards. Good. All right. And then pasasana, right elbow to the left knee, and then keep turning the ribs. Ah, until you can line up your breastbone with the thumb and looking back over your left shoulder. Try to keep the right heel down and feel the breath. Oh, beautiful. Um, I'm releasing that side. And then second side, sometimes it helps to just anchor the elbow first, left elbow to the outside of the right knee, and then bring the palms together, press them, and then turn the ribs. Ooh, looking back over the right. Knees are trying to stay even. Mm, beautiful. And then release and come back to the front. Great. We're going to take downward facing dog pose. You can do that with your hands on the chair or the ground. Mm. Pressing down through your heels. So we've done quite a lot of work in this practice on the ribs, the, the middle, upper back. Just let your head hang down and feel the breath in the ribs. So in your downward facing dog pose, you try to press your heels, lift your kneecaps, quadriceps, sit bones, but also try to lengthen your armpit. Try to let your head be really relaxed, the space between the bones of the spine. Relaxed and lengthening. Mm. Nice work. We're going to come down to a seated position. So however you find your movement, just appreciating that movement. Mm. Take a blanket to put underneath your hip. Okay, back to our simple leg position, whatever works for your knees. You might have to have your legs out straighter. <clears throat> Otherwise, simple cross leg for our Sukhasana twist again. And we're going to twist to the left side. Finding the breath and feeling the breath in the turn of your wrist. Noticing how much potential is there. Mm. All right, now we're going to keep the left hand on, sorry, the right hand on the left knee. And I'm going to take the left arm up by the left ear and reach your right rib over your right thigh. We keep the twist, but we start to reach the torso to the right. And you might be heading your shoulder, your right shoulder towards your right knee, or maybe even the floor in front of your right knee, depending on your knee. <clears throat> Use your left arm, again, as a little bit of a lever Reach it back so that you're lifting the left ribs, so that you're opening the heart towards the ceiling. Oh. Feeling mm. mm. the breath and the whole posture and in your movements to lift up out of the posture. and then change the cross of your leg. <laughs> and Sukhasana, simple twist to the left, uh, sorry, ah, left and right are a muddle today, to the right side. I've got a 50% chance of getting it correct. <laughs> ah, to the right side. Mm, shoulder blades reaching down. 
Um, and then finding the breath in the movement of the ribs, in the length of the spine, all of that tension. Great. Keep your left hand on your right leg. Lift your right arm up by your right ear and lift your left ribs and reach them in the direction of your left thigh. Use your right arm to keep reaching back and take the right ribs back. If you have a lot of movement here, you might be hitting your shoulder onto your left shoulder, onto your left knee, or even on the floor in front of your left knee. But lift into your back. Feel the flow of breath moving in your body. <clears throat> ah. Beautiful. And then coming up, feeling the movement, the ease and the difficulty, <laughs> all in the one you. And we're going to lay down again. And this time with the uh, flank leg underneath the sacrum. If you lie down, this is the easy way to put things under your hip. Lie down, press into your feet, lift your hips rather than perching on them and then lying back. Mm. Blanket under the sacrum, and we're going to observe the lower back relaxing. So when you bring your focus to your, the bones of your lower back, you'll notice they are heading towards the floor like a sling shape. Mm. And then take your legs out to straight, and you'll get the the curve that we normally have in your lower back back again, even a little stronger than normal. So choose which one, legs straight or legs bent. Which one really feels more nourishing for your back? Check in that your shoulder blades are heading towards your back waist as much as you can. So the back of your neck feels long and the space around your heart center is spacious. Room to breathe, room for the heart. Feeling the flow of breath. And then from here, we're going to bring our legs back into the Baddha Kanasana position. So keep your upper body nice and relaxed. Soles of the feet together, knees out wide. If you feel that you've got a good opening for the front of the ribs around the breastbone, you can keep your arms here. If you'd like to try a slightly stronger movement for the shoulders and the armpits, bring the elbows straight out from the shoulders and your arms make a, a you know, there's Arizona cactus arms. I don't know the name of those cactuses. Uh, so the back of your hands are moving towards the floor. And again, choose the better arm shape for your body.
tuning into the flow of breath. And those places in this posture that feel more resistant, let the breath flow there. Feeling your body giving in to the posture. Appreciating the posture. Accommodating. Ah, oh. good, and then releasing, bringing in your arms and your legs. We're going to do a little uh, bamboo pose from here. You might need to shift how that blanket is under your uh, pelvis so that your legs balance. It shouldn't feel like you're straining to hold them they shouldn't be switching on the core of the body. Just relax. And if it does feel like you're straining, you're using your strength rather than just balancing, then put your feet back on the floor. That's just part of the practice. We want to give the body the opportunity to process all of that new information to enjoy the flow of breath. And then releasing your legs. The little mini inversion. So good though for the health of your feet and knees. All right, we'll bring the inside edges of the feet together. Knees together. Arms straight out from your shoulders. Let's take the feet off the floor. We'll do a little core work. So lifting the hips, swing them right and knees go left. And we're not going to touch down, but really feel the core of your body and then lift the leg. Nice. And then lift the hips, swing them left and knees go right. And again, we're not going to quite touch down, but keep your left shoulder blade down. Really feel the core of your body. Good work. And then back up to center and swapping sides. You might like to look in the opposite direction the way your knees are going. Really feeling the core of the body. Things up. Ooh. And last one. Side to side. And back to the center. Oh. Mm, hug your knees into your chest. I'm rocking a little from side to side. Just gonna hold them there for a moment, soft hands. Letting the belly relax. If you had time for your own relaxation, it would be a good idea <laughs> to put your legs out straight for Shavasana. If, like me, you need to finish your practice, then 
We're going to roll over to the right side. Lay there for a moment. Feeling the flow of breath in the whole body. And coming up to sitting. And as you connect to the flow of your breath, feeling part of the great breath, the feeling of the practice with you. Namaste.